Hello everybody and welcome back to a taste of Donegal. Today we're going to be taking a break from doing our silage work and also our hay baling um, and we're actually going to be doing our harvesting today. At least we're going to be beginning it, uh, hopefully going to finish it as well but obviously we won't be able to bale it all up today. The plan is mainly to just harvest the field and either put the grain into storage or to sell it. it just depends uh, if the price is right or not. Um, but at the moment what I'm doing is I'm taking a new trailer back to the yard. It's actually a Rollin trailer. I'm not sure how popular or common the Rollin trailers are in this part of Ireland, but it's a good trailer from a very good pack of trailers which you can download for Farming Simulator. This is the smallest trailer you can download. Obviously I don't think it'd be a sensible idea to go for the biggest one, so I haven't done. Um, I think the smallest one, even this one actually, is quite big, so we wouldn't want anything bigger. So yeah, we're going to take it over to the field which is just in front of us. It's field number 10. I think we own two wheat fields. This field is actually one of two, and it's the smaller one. I want to do the smaller one first because we don't actually need to have all the straw which is going to produce out of these fields. So we might just bale the first field and then chop the other one. Uh, it just depends how much money we actually need and how much straw we need. So I'm yet to decide what we're going to do with field number 22, which is our other wheat field. It's a big field, very big field. So obviously there'll be a lot of straw in that. We might just bale it and sell it all off. Because it's not very likely we'll need that much. Now the next thing to do is to take the Deutz harvester to our respawn point field which is just over there you can see our header is in there and also a header trailer now I had to change the header trailer because uh, initially I downloaded just the standard header trailer you can get in the base game and that wasn't really the right trailer for this harvester and the header kept flying off so what I've done is I've got the correct one now I didn't realize at first but this header trailer was actually already available in the pack, it's just it had put, been put into the miscellaneous section rather than the header trailer section, so I didn't see it at first, but yes, this is the right one. It's not green and it's not branded as a Deutz, but it's in the same pack, so you would have thought that it would be able to attach to this one okay, because it certainly can't attach to the, the New Holland one, or the, the non-branded uh, custom colour one. Let's just get this attached, and then we'll be able to take it to the field. Obviously the field isn't very far away, but we can't go through the yard with the header on. There just isn't enough space. So let's just get this onto the trailer. We will return to our haymaking tomorrow, I think. I've just kind of put it on hold because I know that we've been doing a lot of that recently. And I wanted to just have a bit of a change. Now before it would just roll off, yeah, that's much better. So we should be able to attach to it with the harvester. I think you can. Yeah, I can just about to see a hitch in there so whether or not we'll be able to negotiate the yard I'm not sure yet we'll give it a go if we can't do it we'll just get the little uh, Z tractor and go that way can we attach like this press X maybe not sure it says missing unlock and then missing lock there might be a glitch with it but it's not too far anyway we shouldn't knock it off in that time this here is the challenging part getting around the corner. The trailer should follow us okay, but it, it is quite tight this, and this is a big harvester for the map. So I'm going to try my luck here. Oh, we're already crashing. I think we're catching something. Hmm. Having said that, I'm not sure if I did catch anything. It looked like it was juddering, but might be wrong. Yes, it might have been the back of the harvester on the shed. Might get might get round with just a few scratches on the back of the trailer. And on the back of the harvester. Yes, we're round just about. So with that bit out of the way, let's begin harvesting. Unfortunately, once again we're gonna have to drive into the crop just to get the header on. But I'll try my best not to crush it too much. I've been looking forward to doing a harvest on this map because there aren't many fields, so clearly cereal work isn't very common. But I still be looking forward to it and using this combine. 
I've not actually used it yet, this is the first time. Right, let's unfold. And we'll go clockwise around the field. I tend to go clockwise. Usually if I go the other way around then everyone says I'm going the wrong way. So it <laughs> keeps everyone happy. Right, let's get it all going and see how good this is. So we've got the very handy gauge up there which tells you how far off the edge of the crop you are for maximum efficiency. It is slightly off, there we go. We want to keep it in the green. We don't really want any red light showing at all. A bit more to the right. It's a very handy gadget that. Perfect. And we are on the correct mode, we're on swath mode. Just making sure of that. Didn't want to be going around the field in chop mode. And we'll do the normal thing, we'll, we'll do two headlands and then we will just go up and down the field. It's not going to take very long. I like the, uh, the dust particles which have been put into this harvester. That is really nice, very realistic. And there's our two fields from before. We do need to get that bailed up before the grass starts to regrow. Hmm, I should probably check and say yes. We'll put the growth rate, no, growth rate to uh, off, I think, just for the time being. Because the last thing I want to do is be baling those uh, swaths of grass or hay when it's regrown again. That would be crazy. Keeping perfectly in line here. Oh, whenever I say that, it goes off. It was doing. It was perfectly in line for about 20 meters. Flickering. But it's still good. Still efficient, that. Okay, we're going for the second headland now. I don't think I'm going to take more than two off because it would just be way too much. We'll be able to turn around in the space provided. So after this time, we'll just go up and down the field until it's completed, which, looking at it, won't be too long. It's a very small field. We might turn a few more fields into arable, um, primarily for maize or corn, uh, rather than wheat, OSR or barley. Uh, because I think, yeah, two fields probably isn't enough, because I want to do some silage harvests with maize, but uh, I want to keep it most of the map, I want to keep most of the map as grass. Okay, 75% full. We are probably going to have to unload when we get to the end of here. Because otherwise the auger is going to be on the incorrect side. We'll put it out and we'll get the Rollin trailer underneath. I'm not quite sure what the capacity is for this trailer, but it should be plenty for us. I really like the unload texture, or the unload density. Sometimes it's like dust, and other times it's like this. Much better. And that is the harvester empty. It's only filled the trailer 27%. We get back into our harvester and continue work. So there we go, off we go again. Now I might be doing three episodes of A Taste of Donegal this week because I'm having, as usual, uh, terrible internet problems, primarily the download speed. Upload isn't too bad, uh, but the download is horrific, so I can't really uh, join any servers, which is a bit of a hassle. So, I might not be able to do the multiplayer video, which means I'll likely be doing a taste of Dunny Gold again. But that is no bad thing, this is a fantastic map, and I always look forward to doing another episode on it. But we should be back to normal next week, just have to see. Hopefully it will be. working our way inwards and it's, it's going well. This is, I think, a good size harvester for the map. 
I wouldn't want anything smaller because it would take forever in first like for 22 so I think really this is a good choice I'm really happy with this harvester I think it is a good harvester for the map not sure like as I said before I don't know what machines exactly are in this part of Ireland but um, I think I don't know Boyd's Farm probably isn't but I just think it's uh, still a, a good harvester for this map from looking at the comments I think John Deere is pretty big um, New Holland possibly Massey Ferguson that's just what I've read as for JCB and things like that I don't think so much but that's only going by what other people have said so I'm not sure exactly it kind of reminds me of FS11 just because of the make of Harvester but obviously this is higher higher detail, more textures and uh, much better textures as well just the same kind of machine in fact it might even be the same model number it's a 6095 HTS so it could well be it's been a while since I've played FS11 so I can't rem really remember but uh, it was a similar model very similar One thing I really like is the twin exhaust pipes. They look really good. But overall, it is a nice harvester. I would like to have a Massey Ferguson one too, but I don't think there are many good Massey Ferguson harvester mods for FS15. I think there were a few 413 but they might not have been converted over yet. We're very close to the end now. I think all we have to do is go back up there and we'll be done. should be it. Just about got that in. So yes, this should be the final pass of the field. And yeah, I don't know how many birds we're going to get out of this, but I'm hoping at least 10. Should be. You would have thought we'd get about 10 out of it. Just haven't really decided yet which baler we're going to use, because I didn't really want to use one which can also wrap the bales as well because obviously you don't wrap the straw bales. Uh, so I might get another one. We can afford it. We've got 516,000 euros. So I think we're just about to be able to afford another baler. I just don't want to have too many of each implement because we don't have enough space to store it. This tiny bit left here. And then we will be finished. And yes, we'll bail this in a few days' time. So that is it. We'll switch it all off. And we do need to fold the header up again. Drive over to our tractor and trailer. And of course unload it. 76% in this time, so we didn't fill it the first time. So I don't think we've even had two full loads. About one and a half harvester loads not too bad but it probably wasn't fertilized in the first place just park that there and back into our tractor again now this trailer is actually a high tip trailer which I think is mainly for when you're doing the silaging so it's going to be very handy for then you just have to make sure you've got it on the right body type because otherwise it doesn't accept certain crop types that's where I always get confused because I always have the wrong trailer type on uh, but yes yeah, so this this is obviously the right trailer type for the grain you've then got I think two for silaging and then one as a dump trailer so for example sugar beet or potatoes 
15% left in the combine harvester and it's just over half filled our trailer so not a lot really but we're doing it really for the straw not so much for the grain we'll just switch the engine off on the combine and we'll drive over to either the tipping point or the sell point I think I probably will go and sell it but obviously we need to fill the trailer a bit more our grain storage point is not too far from here so if we put everything we've got in storage into the trailer as well then it'll make our trip worthwhile I think it's in here I'm not sure whether you can just fill it from an auger or if you have to do it with a bucket it looks like you have to do it with a front loader so that is what we'll do just to make this worthwhile give ourselves a bit more space put the tractor just there and let's go and get a front loader now I've actually just realized that we do have a tractor with a front loader which is the McCormick but we're using that currently so we should probably buy a telehandler as well because I think most farms would have a telehandler so I think it would be very useful the only other thing we could have is a skid steer but I don't know if we'll find enough use for it I suppose it has been quite a long time since I've used one, um, but I think I'll put that on hold just for now. So let me know if you want me to buy it or not. For now, we'll go with the uh, is it Lieber, I think it is. Yep, and we'll get the bucket for that. Obviously, we can change this at any time. We we can change the telehandler for another make. Just what we're going to start off with. And I am going to sell one or two more tractors. I think that Steyr tractor we've got, I think I might get rid of that and possibly the small Zeta tractor because you are right a lot of people have been saying I've got way too many tractors and I, I do agree there are too many uh, so we will cut down on the amount we've got but the telehandler I think we do need so we'll use this and actually it's been quite a long time since I have used this I've been using the Merlot quite a bit recently so this is, uh, in a way for me, slightly different. Maybe not for you though. So that's the main yard, and then the second yard here is where we are storing all of our grain. So let's just quickly load this up. I think it's a bit of a guessing game to know which is what crop type. Obviously that's canola, that's corn. The wheat and the barley is what confuses me. We need to go by the colour. Okay, um, I think we're going with the darker one. I think. We might just have to drive into there and see what it shows up as. So let's just have a look. There is 8,000 or so liters, no, wrong crop. Yeah, over 8,000 liters here of each crop type. Trust me to go for the wrong one. It is picking up 4,500 liters in each bucket load though, so only two loads are required. It seems to be accepting it. And this will finish it off. 88% in there. 
So once this is fully loaded, we'll go to the sell point, which I need to discover where it is first of all, and see how much money we can make from it all. It won't be really impressive, but it's a bonus. There we go. So this is probably a good place to store our telehandler just for the time being. So I put it into one of these bays. And we'll turn the engine off. So let's go and find our cell point. Yeah, that trailer looks to be attached very low on the tractor. Maybe the tractor is just too small for it. You wouldn't have thought it is, but I don't know. It's just very heavy, I think. All the weight is at the front. So onto our info page, let's have a look here. Wheat, uh, we need to go over to Homeland. I think that is the only sell point, yes it is. So 665 euros per tonne. And Homeland is near the store. Hmm, I think I've broken the tractor's back. It does look to be tilting back an awful lot. As long as we can get it to the cell point in one piece, that would be good. I'll have to remember in future never to put the McCormick on the Roland trailer again. Oh, I left the beacon on. Sorted. Here it goes. Can we go left out of here? Yeah, I think we can. I always go right, so I want to try and vary the way I go. See something different for a change. Hmm. Ouch, that tractor is painful. It's not just me, is it? Yeah, it, honestly, that looks to be bending back quite a bit. It's pulling it okay. It just looks incredibly heavy. It's probably my fault, though. I should have spread it more evenly in the trailer. Right, so we need to go right here at the forest. Here we are at Homeland. Let's get this weight out of the trailer. I think we're going to have to... I think we'll have to spin around, although there might be two cell points. No, this is the straw cell point and the other one is for wool. We're just back into the uh, hopper here. See if we see any difference on the tractor, it makes it lighter. Does that look any better? Still quite heavy. Anyway, I think we are coming to the end here. So I'm going to take this back to the yard and we'll probably call it a day for now. Until tomorrow, where we'll continue to do our hay baling. That is in fields number four and five. We need to get all them baled and then of course everything needs to be collected, including the silage wrapped bales. We need to find a good place in the yard for it all, stack them up neatly, and then we'll finally be able to buy our livestock and get all that going. And we'll just park this in the open bit of yard here. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, you can join me again the same time tomorrow for more on A Taste of Donegal. So thanks again, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.